Hello everyone, welcome back to WRX Garage. Today we have a, a bit of an odd video for you, but um, as you guys know, it's the middle of winter here. We got the holidays rolling through, we got Christmas coming up, and essentially, um, you know, Kyle and I have both been terribly busy and, you know, hanging out with the family, spending time with everyone, seeing family and friends and things like that, and uh, haven't had too much time to work on the cars, but uh, definitely want to uh, let you guys know, you know, what we're doing and things like that, keep everyone up to date. Um, today, um, I'm going to be doing two things, a couple things actually, uh, three. Uh, one, we're going to be installing these right here, which are, let's see if you can see that. These are uh, extenders for the adjusters in the rear, as you guys know, for the coilovers. Um, essentially, for the rear coilovers, um, they are down in the trunk lining underneath that, so to adjust those, to, to change the hardness or softness on those uh, dampers, um, it's gonna be very difficult because you have to pull everything out of the trunk, things like that, and so today I'm gonna be installing these extenders so that I can poke these through the lining, and then you can just reach in and uh, click those either way anytime you want. Um, the other thing I'm gonna be doing, so the second thing I'm gonna be doing today is uh, actually redoing and revamping our intro video. It is a bit dated and was filmed on my old camera, so not the greatest quality in my opinion. So um, we'll be running that right now and I'll get back to you guys later. All right, guys, so got the trunk open. First thing to do to install these rear extenders, we're just gonna be emptying everything out of the trunk. Um, I'll do that fast forward so you guys don't get bored. So our coilover adjustments are hidden underneath right here. I don't know if you can see that, but essentially we're gonna be taking this uh, adjustment knob off the top there. Um, there's just a little uh, Allen key with a little uh, screw that goes in the side. We can pop that off. And then what we'll be doing, so this is gonna be going right through the top of this piece. And then what I'm gonna do is cut a little hole or two little slits in the top of the uh, liner here so that we can put a little reusable Velcro tie through there, just like this, and hold on to the top so it's not, you know, bouncing around and stuff. Let's see, if, see if you guys can see right now. All right, so here's that little piece that I'm talking about. I'm gonna be replacing that. Maybe I should be doing this without. All right, so there's the little nut we have to pull off. And it'll be nice and simple. And then just replace that. Put you right on top. Okay. See if I can line it up, line it up perfectly for where it was. And what I'll probably have to do is just, I'm gonna test fit this real quick. All the way to the softest. See, there's another slot for a, might as well put the other one back in there. It's right in here. Maybe. Guess we'll find out. I'm hoping that's all I have to do. It's just that little flap. I don't know if you guys can see that. This little flap here. Let's see if I can finagle this through there somehow. Ah. 
Okay. Hey. <laughs> that actually works pretty perfectly, actually. So, nice. So now I'm just gonna cut a couple slits in the top here so we can run that, uh, the little bit that'll hold on to there. The, uh, the Velcro retaining straps right there. Buckle strap. Goes that way. Like that. Here we go. Oh. Okay. Well, that was a shit show. Um, <laughs> let's just show you guys exactly what I did. And it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but uh, I think it'll work. Um, as you can see, I have my little Velcro thing and it pulled a bunch of stuff from the back of this lining, but um, it'll hold perfectly. Just exactly what I want. And uh, yeah. All right, so let's get on to uh, task number three. End of the day, guys. Um, one thing I did want to talk about real quick is about dialing that setting on your coilovers. Um, the adjustability setting. So, of course, here are the fronts, nice and easy to access, but what I just did back there was essentially extended that up so we could uh, get to those ones in the rear in the trunk really easily. Um, but for the actual setting, I made the mistake of starting at the absolute lowest. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I made the mistake of starting at the absolute lowest, and I really should have started in the middle instead, um, because I realized that I decided the other day to try, you know, to adjust it and go a little firmer than I had it. And honestly, um, the firmer setting probably was where, you know, right in the middle, more medium setting rather than all the way at the end of the, the lowest end of the spectrum. It really helped with stabling the car. And the car is actually a lot smoother on the road and even over potholes and stuff, it's smoother at the higher, um, the, the hardness rate in that um, damper. So when you guys are installing your coil coilovers, I definitely recommend starting at the middle setting. So out of 24, start at, go to 12 clicks and go up or down from there instead of starting at either extreme. So yeah. This is the real end of the day. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, and that is, of course, my plans for uh, the spring. Um, my warranty on my car is uh, ending pretty soon. Um, Kyle has a lot of plans for his car as well, but I have a bit of a pickle. Um, I have to decide between two different options, and of course, these are going to be, well, I guess, including non-power options, it would be three, but, um, for just power options, which I'm going to be doing power upgrades on the car uh, in the spring, I have two options. One is what I would consider a stage one plus plus. So the stage one tune would be, you know, an off the shelf tune from Cobb with the access port. The other option, of course, would be stage one plus would be um, the tune plus an intake, um, cold air intake. And what I would consider stage plus plus, would, stage one plus plus would be um, intake, plus uh, EGR, TGV, and um, the electronic boost controller from Grim Speed. Um, I think all those, with all those, it would need an E-Tune. Um, I would run 93 octane, I would do 93 and a 91 tune just to be conservative. Um, and I think that would add, I'm guessing 50 wheel horsepower, um, land to me, you know, right around 275, something like that. Um, the other option would be go for a flex fuel tune uh, and switch to E85. Keep the stock engine, stock everything for now. Uh, and then I'll probably do later upgrades later on. Um, I guess this is just more the order of things rather than what I should do versus another thing. So the issue, I like the idea of E85 for a couple things. Uh, one, people say that with a good flex fuel tune, E85 will actually um, or running an ethanol blend, it won't be running straight E85. I'll probably do an E30, E40, or E50 blend, depending on what my uh, tuner uh, suggests. Um, 
One benefit of ethanol, of course, is it's going to add on a stock WRX from what I've heard, anywhere between 65 and 75 wheel horsepower, which is going to be insane. Second, um, as you guys probably, you might know, uh, I'm actually an environmentalist. I'm a, I work in sustainability uh, for my you know day-to-day -day job. And um, switching over ethanol um, would actually, an ethanol blend would reduce my carbon footprint on the car um, for emissions for the entire year. So um, those are, that's somewhat important to me. Um, and of course, you're talking about with any kind of ethanol blend, you know, um, cooler combustion temperatures, things like that. They're also gonna be benefiting the car. The issue is that here in Connecticut, there's only two places that you can get E85 from. And for me to do that, I would probably have to buy a bunch of race jugs. And uh, it's about 45, 50 minutes away, no matter where I go uh, from the center of the state. So I have to fill up some race jugs with that. And I would probably end up doing that every two months. So probably more inconvenient, but it is the option that I would, I might prefer for now. Um, we'll have to see. What do you guys think? Please comment down below. Should I do the stage one? plus plus so the intake egr tgb deletes and then the grim speed boost controller or should i keep it stock for now and just do the flex fuel kit uh, from cobb and then a uh, flex fuel tune um, for the ethanol um yeah what do you guys think comment down below please once again thank everyone for watching as we continue our journey on this uh this youtube journey and then as we you know grow and progress and start making better content we thank everyone who's been a supporter of us over the last uh, couple months um we're really excited for all the content we have coming up we have a lot planned uh, if you have not yet please go and subscribe and please go to our giveaway video if you're a new subscriber all you have to do on that giveaway video to be uh, entered is um Watch the video, subscribe, and then comment down below which of those six options you would like to win. So yeah, thank you guys again for watching and we will see you in the next one.